Everything you are started with your DNA. How you look, how you grow, how you learn, how you feel, how you age, how you struggle, maybe even how you die. When it comes to our DNA, most of us can only wonder. But what if you didn't have to? You see, wisdom begins with wonder. What if you could search inside yourself and play to your strengths, strategize against your weaknesses, connect with your roots? Obama, in his precision medicine speech last year, asked, what if figuring out the right dose of medicine was as simple as taking your temperature? Doctors have always recognized that every patient is unique. You wouldn't wear just any pair of glasses. Your prescription is specific to your vision. Your blood type is specific to your body, and matching the right type could save your life. All right, don't be alarmed as I bare my soul, but ladies and gentlemen, this is my genome. Well, some of it. I couldn't fit the whole thing on the screen because our genomes are huge, three billion pairs of letters make us who we are. If you were to print your genome out as a book, 2,000 letters per page, the book would be over 2 million pages long. And this giant book of self has been a mystery for centuries, but not anymore. From the moment of conception, this genetic blueprint helps determine whether you'll be tall or short, whether you'll have natural talent for math or music or sports. The code even governs many disease susceptibilities and risks. In my case, while perusing my genome, I learned that I metabolize caffeine rather quickly. The stuff passes right through me. I have lower levels of dopamine at rest, therefore am a bit more distracted. But under pressure, like maybe right now, I get an extra influx of dopamine, pushing me to a higher state of alertness because of a variant in a gene called COMT. I learned I don't have the sweet tooth gene, but I am an ultra-rapid metabolizer at a gene known as 2D6, which means I process certain medicines really quickly and they may not work. Others I should avoid because of side effects. Some I shouldn't touch at all. The list goes on and on and on. It's like a user manual for yourself. You can dive in as deep as you'd like into the minutiae of your genome. For example, I was relieved to find out that I have one Neanderthal variant associated with a reduced risk of sneezing after eating dark chocolate. <laughs> Phew. If we zoom out a bit, we see the genetic code coiled up into 23 pairs of chromosomes. Chromosome one, top left. Sex chromosomes, bottom right. In this case, it's a boy. One X chromosome, a little Y next to it. These chromosomes are condensed, crammed into the nucleus of every one of your trillion cells. Unravel them, and you'll see that beautiful double helical structure described by Watson and Crick in the 1950s. Stretch out your genome from one cell, and it would be over six feet tall. Line up all the DNA from all your cells, and it would reach right up to the moon and back 3,000 times. Unwind the helix, and you see the individual pieces of code we call genes, made up of one of four letters, A, T, C, or G. When placed in three-letter combinations, they give instructions to the proteins of your body to build things, do things, like chewing and swallowing your last meal, like the beating of your heart, like checking social media every 10 seconds on your phone. What many people don't know is that there's a quiet revolution in our midst. A new era has been born, allowing us to peer at the divine writing in our DNA. And here's why. In 2003, the world's biggest science project ever was completed, the Human Genome Project. It was a massive undertaking, cost nearly $3 billion and took 13 years to complete. But then we had the code. In 2008, DNA pioneer James Watson had his genome sequence. It cost $1.5 million, took four months. That was only eight years ago. Then Steve Jobs paid $100,000 to have his genome sequenced when he had cancer. Sadly and tragically, it was too late. Detecting this type of cancer earlier might have made all the difference. 
Then Ozzy Osbourne in 2010 paid $40,000 to sequence his genome, not so much to find out what could kill him, but why he hadn't already died from past heavy <laughs> drug use and addictions. And then in 2014, the long-awaited $1,000 genome was announced, thought by many to be the tipping point towards widespread adoption. New hope began to emerge for a future of personalized medical care, where disease risks are well categorized, genetic conditions are detected rapidly, proactively, medications are selected based on your individual genetic profile, and frightening conditions like cancer are detected long before symptoms occur. I recall seeing a patient a few years ago for a genetics consult. A young girl couldn't speak, many neurodevelopmental issues. She had undergone test after test from one doctor to the next. No answers. In my search for a diagnosis, I ordered two single gene tests based on what I thought were the most likely conditions. Many weeks and several thousand dollars later, both tests came back negative. Still no answers. I felt powerless. I said to myself, this is crazy. Never again will I search for answers one gene at a time when you can now sequence the entire genome for even less cost. The problem is this is a massive amount of data. How do you find one letter gone awry in a two million page book? It becomes a computational challenge. So I left clinical practice, teamed up with the smartest guy I knew, and we built a database, the largest database of genetic variant information ever created with billions of records and growing. We created software to help make sense of individual genomes, automating dozens of complex steps, providing tools to get genomics into everyday healthcare. You see, when you sequence a genome, massive amount of raw data comes off the sequencer in the form of short strings of DNA letters. And you need to piece them together like a puzzle and come up with a list of differences that we call variants. One single letter change where you may have an A and I have a T. But a list of millions of variants for an individual still isn't very helpful. So the software then brings information from the knowledge base and starts to whittle the list down from many to few, using machine learning to go from DNA to diagnosis more quickly, with algorithms trained on real diagnoses and massive data sets combining clinical information, genetic information, to get to the stuff that matters. It's genome interpretation made more simple to find answers in a few clicks rather than a few years. Why do we build this? So that next time I sat down with a family searching for answers, it would be different. Like last year when I met Leah, age two, really cute, but really sick. Leah had a feeding tube. She couldn't hold her head up. She had a seizure there in front of me. The family desperately needed answers, but the old way of searching wasn't working. So we sequenced her genome. Not one gene, but every gene. And lo and behold, there it was. One letter was off in a sodium channel gene that explained everything. Leah's parents came in, and as we explained the finding, they cried. This time, tears made up of a bit more hope, saying, this changes everything. This opens up a new chapter in Leah's life. That night, they connected with a Facebook group of other families dealing with this condition. They found a research network. They learned of a seizure medicine that Leah hadn't tried. So I queried her genome to make sure she didn't have an increased risk of severe rash from this medication. We are entering a new world of individualized, patient-centric healthcare, where eventually we'll all have our genome sequenced and that information at our, at our fingertips to serve as a reference for every important health and wellness question throughout our lives. The director of the National Institute of Child Health summed it up well. One can imagine the day when every newborn will have their genome sequenced, and that will become part of the electronic health record to be used throughout the child's entire life for both better prevention and to be more alert to early manifestations of disease. I don't know how far off this day is, but I think it's up to us to decide. 
it's going to take a monumental shift in the way each of us thinks about and participates in our health. A shift that can only be achieved by accelerating the speed of enlightenment, enabled by this new technology, empowering our generation with knowledge that is sitting there within us, right beneath the surface. Think about that magical moment when you experience your genome for the first time. What does your DNA say about you and about your loved ones? Where does your story begin? Thank you.